Hi, this is Gail. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to stay warm in a camper van or van camper, whichever you want to call it. I did part of this live on a live stream, but we're going to come back and I wanted to talk about the Mr. Bunny heater because I used that for a while to stay warm in my camper van. Everything I'm showing you are techniques that I personally used and feel comfortable sharing. There are some safety considerations we're going to talk about as we get further on into the video that we talked about during the live stream. Without further ado, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Let's look at this Mr. Buddy heater. We're also going to talk about a terracotta heater, candles, sleeping bag, and solar. Be right back. Step one in how to stay warm in a camper van is the design itself. In our van, we have a one inch piece of foam core with the Mylar backing in the ceiling, each wall, and the floor. That gives us some insulation in the doors. Let me show you. We use the pink insulation like you would have in your house and put a cover on the back door. On this one, we used with the air conditioner. Hope you can see it there. We also use the pink insulation and put a cover on it. This, we don't have insulation on yet. That's just a project we've not gotten to. It is number one on the list. Your cold air comes in through your walls, your doors, and your windows. Where the doors meet, that lets air come in. So you wanna block that. You also wanna add insulation to your windows. I did that by making covers to fit each window. They are not the same size. There is one, two, three, four, five, six windows in the van, and I don't think any of them are the same. I made these window coverings. These are Reflectix covered by black cloth, as you can see, and I've got Velcro on the back of them to keep them in place on the window. The thing about these is the Reflectix is not actually an insulator. It's a blocker made it's also pliable so it was perfect for the windows and these just fit right up against the windows just like that that blocks cold it also blocks heat they help tremendously now as far as the door is concerned you can see where it meets my hands can fit into that. And so this lets air in. You can take a blanket or a piece of Reflectix and use it as a block and that helps. Also along the bottom is another area where air comes in. I'm a cheapskate, so what I have been doing so far is rolling up a bath towel and putting it under there. You can also roll up a bath towel and where the two doors meet to help block air that way. Now we're also going to talk about the Mr. Heater, the flower pot heater, candles, blankets, and so forth. That's coming up. You know, when you have a van camper, what we did was we started out with a white panel van. So my husband has done the work. Yay! Shout out to Heavy there. We designed it so that the back portion of the van, where we are now, could be divided into a small living space. The middle portion of the van, which is where this cabinet is, we have for storage. Now, the reason we have so much storage is because we conceived of this van as being one for mission trips. And we got to haul everybody's stuff, folks. But when it's not been used for hauling, we can section this off to a middle portion of the van. We can also section it off to a front portion of the van. So we have like three little like rooms, you could call them that. But in sectioning off the van, we thought about it for heat as well as some privacy. Okay, we designed the doors so that they would have a handle that I could put a bungee cord on. Oh, we have one person watching. Tanya, I really appreciate you being in today. 
Okay, so we designed the doors so that the door handles are not solid. Let me pull it down this way. They are designed like this so that I can put a bungee cord on them. We have a panel, a small side panel right here that blocks off the portion where the door is. So that helps divide the van into this back section, which means we don't have as much to heat, which makes it that much more effective to heat. Yeah, bungees are tremendously useful. I did have to stay in the van about five nights a week for about a year. So, and that included, of course, hot and cold, which is why I have some experience with staying warm in a van camper. Obviously, sleeping bags and blankets, those are easy things to get. Low temperature sleeping bags, you can get them to go 30 below. Hikers use them all the time. So we're going to set those aside. One of the other ways that you can keep warm in a camper van is to buy an electric blanket. I have one. I just love it. I'm like totally, totally into electric blankets here. Uh, but there's other ways to keep warm. I'm showing you the easiest ones first. This electric blanket I picked up at a truck stop. And I can link it below too because they sell them on Amazon. It's got the 12 volt. And this just plugs right into your either your solar or into your car battery. We've got the easy stuff taken care of, the most obvious. Now let's talk about heaters for the van camper because I think that's what's on the minds of a lot of people here. A couple of things right quick before we get into some of the heaters for the van camper. But before I talk about heaters, uh, let me talk about the detectors. Now I've got both a fire alarm up front and a carbon monoxide detector. This is the second carbon, carbon monoxide detector that I've had. The other one is linked in my Amazon store. I just in trying to do stuff with Tomlin, I wound up dropping or knocking the carbon monoxide detector off the wall and it shattered. The other thing is I found these cans. The first alert Tundra or it's a fire extinguisher, but it's a can. And the reason I went with this and it shows what kind of fires it puts out. My concern was in the heat of the moment, I would not be able to figure out how to pull the pin and do the things with the handle that I needed to do to get the fire extinguisher to work. On this, it just works like an aerosol can. You just simply spray, which I'm not going to. <laughs> I don't want to have problems cleaning up the van. Um, so I just spray. And I felt like with me, um, I've got a couple of cans, got one in front, one in the back, and it just seemed like a better option for me because I know if there's a fire, I might panic and not remember how to navigate and get those fire extinguishers going. So a couple of those. And ta-da, water bottle. I have that. One of the things about being warm is you have different temperatures you gotta think about. So a simple match and candle will provide a fair amount of heat. Um, with this being blocked off, sometimes this is what I needed. Um, the more that you have blocked off, of course, with the candle holder itself, uh, the longer you're going to have to make it run but I was shocked at the amount of heat this um, put out. Are you afraid to burn a candle in a van? You know, that's a good question. What I do is up front, uh, because of the carbon monoxide, I leave the window down just a little bit and I have the carbon monoxide detector. 
as far as being afraid to put it in the van, um, I'll show you the next heater and I'll show you where to put it. And that lowers my anxiety quite a bit. This next thing that I used um, for quite a while is a terracotta heater. And I'm going to lower this so you can see it better. Now, terracotta heater is pretty good. It also made me nervous. And I'll show you why in just a second. Let me get my selfie stick adjusted here. I love this thing. Okay, a terracotta heater is a couple of terracotta pots put together one inside the other. So I've got a small one and I've got a larger one. And this creates an air space in between the two pots. And it's actually, it's got a steel rod in the middle. And this is not just to keep things together, though it certainly does. But it's a conduit. It's a conduit for the heat. And what you're using when you do an aircon heater is candles. I hope I don't knock that off. <laughs> that would just be the, perf the perfect um, <clears throat> situation. No, it wouldn't. Okay, so um, you asked about where did I, about how did I feel about putting a candle in the van? I put everything right here in the sink so it's surrounded by some metal. When I do the terracotta heater, it's got the terracotta base and then some little feet, which are dirty. You can see I've used, <laughs> I've used this quite a bit. And the feet allow for some space for the terracotta planter to sit up on it. Also, it's also nice um, having it in the sink because I've got the faucet right here. So, I can, so I've got a couple of water sources really quickly if I need them, which makes me feel a little bit better. So what you would do to this is just fill the terracotta heater with these tea light candles. And as you can see, they've been burned. You can get these for, well, I got a pack of 50 for a few dollars um, at Walmart. I'm just going to toss those in. Uh, what makes me, or did make me nervous at first was lighting all the candles and having all of them lighted. Well, That one's not going to work. And if this was anything except demonstration purposes, I probably should use a fireplace match. <clears throat> um, right now, I'm not having to use this. I'm just showing how it would work, but I like your idea of fireplace match. I should have done that. Really should have done that. Um, so normally I would have all of this lighted. Then I would take the, ter the top portion of the terracotta planter and put it directly on on top of the candles. Now, this works pretty well. In fact, I did a video on it. Uh, I'll link that below and it raised it to from like the low, I want to say low 40s, um, high 30s, higher mid 30s to about 60 degrees in here. Did a really nice job. But the thing about this is it takes a long time to heat up. So that's, that's the thing about this. So heating the terracotta planter, you got to give it like 30 minutes to an hour to really heat up um, to keep the van camper warm. Um, and it's going to work best the closer you are, of course, to the heat, the better it's going to work. The thing is, 
um you know how a charcoal grill how it takes them to heat up that's kind of the same thing that you're looking at so what i did and i would suggest to other people is when you park your van before it gets super cold go ahead and start this thing and have extra candles on hand so the blanket the terracotta heater and the sleeping bag uh, the other thing now that we have solar life is a little bit easier as far as the heater that i put some there it is and so i actually have one of these small heaters that i plug up into the solar this little baby will run um i've got a 100 amp hour battery 100 watt solar panel uh, we're going to upgrade that probably before we go to Alaska. That's our big goal there this summer. It runs about three and a half to four hours. It does well. Now, again, I've got the van sectioned off. I don't know how well it would do to heat up an entire van. But as far as the back third of the van, which is where I am, this does great. I just plug it up and go. It's also got one of the safety features, and I don't know if all of the thing, all of the little heaters like this have them or not, um, but it's got a safety feature right here. So if Tomlin goes through the van and knocks the plug out, or or knocks the plug and knocks this machine off it turns off so it's not going to be continuing to generate heat up against the floor or paper or wood or blanket or anything like that that might be in the floor um, it turns it off immediately through this and frankly um, when it comes to the van i would not buy a heater for the inside of the van without having the safety precautions on it um, I'm a real big believer in safety precautions. That's why, in addition to fire, I've got the carbon monoxide detector, the bottle of water, and the um, can of foam to put out fires. I just, it makes me feel a lot more comfortable. You do want to have some air coming in um, to keep down the likelihood of a carbon monoxide thing. So, lowering the window up front just a little bit. And now, since we have solar, whoops, we also have this fan up here in the ceiling. That's just a regular RV fan. And I will leave this and just open it up a little bit. And I will not lie, it does a little bit, but you have to have it for the safety factor. It's just, you've, you've got to be able to let some air in so yeah there you go and i don't need that uh, now that we have the ability to plug in the heaters that's a like i said it's a 250 watt heater that we've got we do have a little bit larger one but i'm not showing that to you because it only works for about 10 minutes on high and it's just it's pointless the reason we have it is if you are out at a campground or where you can access shore power you can plug up any heater that you want to so we just have a little bit larger heater that we use for that so that's all so yeah this is all about how i stay warm in a van camper and i hope it helps somebody else this winter because it can be kind of tough so what do you all think We've already talked about the idea that Tanya gave me about using a fire a fireplace match, which is really a good idea. Um, so I wish I'd thought about that. The worst part is when you have to get up in the middle of the night, though, and go to the bathroom. And I don't have any good answers for staying warm for that, except gloves, hat, jacket, the regular. so we've talked about some of the other ways that you can stay warm in a camper van and i have mentioned my mr buddy heater 
We're going to go ahead and take a look at that now. There are some pros and cons uh, when having a Mr. Budding he heater in an enclosed space. One of which is the carbon monoxide detector that I just talked about a minute ago as, and also having that fire extinguisher. I like having that handy front and back of the van camper. We've used the Mr. Buddy heater when it's been in the low teens. You see my service dog behind me here. He's checking out everything. Hi, Tomlin. Yeah. So I have used this in low teens and managed to stay warm. You do have the caveat. You don't want to put anything really close to it. However, the air, it does blow mostly straight up. This is the bigger one. They've got a couple of different models. I wanted the big one. It's got some great features on it that will let you know if your oxygen supply is getting too low, then it has an alarm on it. This heater is propane driven. Whoops. With two small green tanks. They just slip in on the sides here. Pick these up at Walmart. You need two of them. They're about $6 per two pack right now. And you go one on each side, like so. This is heavy. You want to be prepared for that when you pick it up. This is not some lightweight thing. It takes D-sized batteries in the back here. So you want to have plenty of these on hand because I found that on cold nights, whoops, he's back on here. I found that on cold nights, you may go through a couple of cans of gas, both cans of gas, which means you'll need some more for the next night. Um, and after a few nights, you're going to need to replace the batteries because they're going to go down. The reason you have the batteries is because of this feature right here has got a fan on it. Hopefully you can hear that. That's what the D batteries power. Turning it on is easy. Just flick it, hit the power, pilot, it lights up, turn it on over to low, and so forth. I don't need it on right now, so I'm going to turn it off. But that's the Mr. Buddy heater that I used. I'm going to link all of this down to the description box below. So if you can't remember exactly which one I've got, it's okay because it'll be down below. I also have it in my Amazon influencer link. These are some of the ways that I stay warm in a van camper. Let me know what you think. How do you stay warm? Leave those comments down below because right now it's cold outside and you may be helping somebody tremendously, maybe even saving a life by leaving those comments. So Thank you all for watching. Again, hashtag be bodacious all the way. Go out and grab life and have fun. And I will see you out, about, and online. Bye.